As someone who's had previous success on YouTube as a career, doing it full on, full time as a career, I want to talk about how doing so is not always as cracked up as people make it to be. Let me explain. So today's video is gonna be more of a discussion type video. It's not gonna be, let's say, as polished as a lot of my videos normally would be. I feel like this topic deserves a good conversation with you guys uh, from someone who has been there on the really big highs of YouTube, which I'll explain in a little bit. We've been at the really low lows. And let me just say, this is not my career anymore. I don't do YouTube full-time anymore. We have been there, been there, done that, so to say, and now I'm working, uh, like I pretty much always have my whole life, a uh, full-on, uh, surprise to many people, a very manly job. I build electrical poles for a living. So before I explain what I actually meant by the title of this video, doing YouTube as a career is not all that it's cracked out to be. Let me explain that in a little bit. But first, let me tell you guys why I actually know this, why I have personal experience telling you guys about this topic. So about three years ago, me, Mikey, who's still on the show, and another guy named Ralphie, who used to be on our early, early episodes, we all met up at this office and we kind of had a job together doing like marketing and different type of video stuff and we were all working together. We started talking about doing YouTube and we started talking about doing it from a business perspective, not doing necessarily any of our passions, but how can we do YouTube in a way strictly for monetization reasons, strictly for, yes, for a living, for money, to make money doing it. So we started doing a lot of research, started looking to algorithms and really diving deep into how to actually make money on YouTube. Again, no passion in this, no, okay, I wanna do retro gaming or something that I'm really into or toys or something like that. It was no strictly for a living reason, for that purpose only. So after a ton of research and diving deep, we really noticed that kids' videos is where people were making big money. So a lot of people at that time would look at people like Logan Paul or Jake Paul or PewDiePie or trends like that. And these people were getting, you know, five million, six million, sometimes 10 million views per video. But we were noticing kids' channels were genuinely getting double to triple to four times that. So we wanted to do stuff with kids' videos. And what we decided to do is nursery rhymes and cover songs. Now these nursery rhymes, we pretty much got animated. We didn't do um, any on-screen stuff with the nursery rhymes. With our cover songs, we definitely were on screen. We'd be dressed up. It was a lot of stuff during the time Moana was big. Uh, we were doing a lot of Moana cover songs uh, for the kids' nursery rhymes. It was animations. Um, some of us would sing to it. We'd have different voiceovers and stuff like that. And through time, it grew. And I'm talking it grew big. I can put some screenshots up to show you guys how big I'm talking about. Uh, we're talking in about a little less than a year and a half. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I think around 175 million views in that time, uh, which in turn is well over $150,000, if we're being honest. We saw the crazy numbers, videos, 24 million videos, next day, 13 million views, I think I said videos, 13 million views, 24 million views, next video, 17 million views, huge numbers, and the trending page was different at that time as well, and we were plenty of times on the trending page. This is when YouTube would actually put like top views on the trending page other than just them trying to push their agenda. So it was a crazy, crazy, crazy time for us. Absolutely wild and as anybody knows with YouTube, which isn't really the point of this video, it can be taken away like that. Um, YouTube can just snag it up and say, nope, demonetized. This was also during the time when people started doing like the creepy like Spider-Man Elsa making out videos and stuff. And basically everyone that was a kid's channel where adults were somehow a part of it were demonetized and they were like, yeah, we'll get back to you guys and kind of figure it out from there. Um, no, we never got remonetized and uh, we were out of luck. I and mean, we tried to fight it and figure it out for a long time, but it just didn't happen. So that, that that's just my experience being at the top and knowing what it's like to do YouTube as a full on career. Okay, so now I wanna tell you guys what I mean by the title of this video, doing YouTube as a career isn't all that it's cracked up to be, but I'm not talking about what I just explained to you guys. I'm not talking about doing this for business reasons and making a lot of money and then getting it taken away. That's just part of the YouTube game. When you do YouTube as a career, if it's your passion, doing your passion 
can suck. Now, I know a lot of you guys might say, hey, but I've heard you in the past, Riff, say that you should do your passion on YouTube because you'll enjoy it more. I still agree with that. But I'm saying if you do your passion on YouTube as a career, you can find yourself in some really tricky situations. And what I mean by that is, say you're doing what we do. You're doing game hunting videos because that is what you're, dang it, that's what you're passionate about in life. But if it's your career and you start to see the views kind of well, when it's your career, you find yourself making decisions and doing things you wouldn't do if it wasn't your career. And what I mean by that, if you know the YouTube game or any business model in the world, you gotta stay with what's going on. You gotta stay with the times. We've seen it with tons of companies, with Blockbuster, with, I don't know, Netflix, Fandango, whatever. They've had to mold themselves into different ways to adapt to what's going on in the world. The same goes for YouTube. Sometimes things are hot, sometimes they're not. So if it's your passion, and you see the struggle happening, the views aren't there, but it's also your career, you find yourself doing what you have to do. You look at some other type of videos, yeah, that would probably do better. That would probably do well if I talked about that more. Ah, I'd probably get more views if I did these type of thumbnails. And let me say before I go on, I've been guilty a million times, so let me, let me say that before I cast judgment. But you find yourself doing things and you film certain videos and you're doing it for the views straight up that's okay if it's like your business and it's not something you're passionate about, but it's really hard to sit with. It's those moments where you lay in bed at night and you go, this is my passion. And I'm finding myself faking certain things that I'm into on YouTube for views. And that's where it becomes hard. Like I said, when it's your business or it's a strategy strictly for finances and it's something you're not into, you don't feel bad about it at night, just like any job. It's not like a lot of people wake up and are stoked to you know, uh, dig a hole with passion or process papers with passion, you know, and they feel bad if they kind of had to do it in a way they didn't want. It's, it's, it's your job, there's a little bit of a difference to it. But when it's your, your source of what you love and you find yourself twisting the truth and bending the truth for views, it sucks. And like I said, I've been there. I find myself being like, all right, I'm gonna do gaming, but I'm gonna, when we first started this channel, we jumped back into it. I was like, well, maybe I could talk about the Switch a little more. You know, it's, it's hot. I love the Switch, but it's not like my passion. So I would talk about it and I'd lay in bed at night and be like, why am I doing this? Which is why I also give a lot of credit to YouTubers who do their passion and have done it successfully without having to change or mold to trends or views and switch and try to say they're into things they're not. I give a lot of credit to those guys because there are a lot of people out there like that who have done their passion on YouTube and have made it successfully as a career, but haven't had to switch what they're into and mold their themselves into something that they're not strictly for views. So props to those people because that's not easy to do on YouTube. I almost forgot to say that I wanted to say keep going for those of you who are doing your passion on YouTube, whether you wanna make a career out of it or not. If you're doing your passion and doing it because you love it, that's a win situation no matter what. If you don't want, if you want to worry about financial gain, that's a different topic, some of this, some other things. But I just wanted to say, if you're doing your passion and you're doing it not for any like finances or big success, you're gonna enjoy your YouTube journey. That's it, back to the video or wherever we're at at this point. I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place and this is another thing that I thought about that I think is a really good point to talk about is that when I was doing YouTube strictly for business reasons and financial reasons, I would spend a lot of time on our videos, Mikey would spend a lot of time on the videos, Ralphie would spend a lot of time on the videos, but with all the views they would get and the money they would make, I, there never was a sense of pride doing those videos. It was like, all right, we did it, woo! And we'd celebrate, it was crazy, it was fun, we made a lot of money, so it was awesome. But there never was like a sense of like, that, that, that's my, my, I would never go back and wanna watch that. I mean, I can know they're for kids, but it's just something that I wasn't necessarily proud of making, so to say, but with, YouTube stuff, it's such a weird thing because we love all our content creators to death. We love our people who make our videos, but it's funny how we can all kind of notice when people are doing it for views. You kind of can see through it like, oh, well, 
That guy's probably doing that strictly for views. And again, there are plenty of people who do it for a living. I'm not saying that. Plenty of people who do it for a living who do amazing videos. Amazing. I love them and their videos that I watch all the time and will watch religiously till the day I die. Probably not till the day I die. But you know, you can just kind of sense it when people are doing it because they love it. And it has such like a, a pure form about it. It feels so pure and whole. If you know what I'm saying, I think a lot of people you, of you, I think a lot of you guys actually know what I mean by that. YouTube was such a different place back then. I know there's a lot of things going on with COPPA and everything different in the world with rules and it's a living now, but there was such a sense of like, passion is the word I keep using all around on YouTube. People were only doing this because they loved it. And I feel like there was so much more creativity on YouTube. What people were talking about was straight up what they loved because they only did it for the reason that they loved it. There was no career involved it or anything like that. This whole video, I wanna end by saying, I wanna know your guys' opinion because for me, it is such a weird thing on YouTube, being at the highs, being at the lows, being where we are now, which is a great spot. Of We have so many different things going on in the YouTube spectrum still to this day that I know a lot of you guys know about and some of you guys don't, where we have other channels on YouTube. But Pixel Game Squad is probably the least viewed one, but it's the one where I can like go to bed at night and be like, man, I am proud of this. And I wanna know as a content creator, anybody else out there as a content creator, if you've ever struggled with that and you can be real about it and be honest about it, have you ever with your passion, say you do YouTube gaming as a passion or toy collecting as a passion, it's your passion. But if you ever found yourself kind of fudging a little bit to be like, well, I guess I can do this or do it this way, even though that's not the way I wanna do it, I feel like you know that would get more clicks. And it's a weird thing to lay in bed at night if you've ever had that guilt feeling like, I shouldn't do that. And again, like I said, I've been guilty before. Pixel Game Squad is pretty much where I'm the most proud. Uh, thumbnails I know I can be a little over the top with, but that's kind of how I've always been just because I'm a creative type with, with, with uh, visuals. But I know, even then, I, I'll, I'll still admit, even then I know. And again, this isn't knocking anybody who does YouTube as a living. I wanna make that so clear. I'm proud of those people, happy for those people. If they do it for business reasons or if they were able to keep it with their passions, that is even more power to you because that is very hard to do, do your passion without having to fudge it for anybody. Again, I know this video is different. Hopefully it all made sense. It's kind of me venting and uh, just saying, man, I, I've felt that struggle before and it's it's a real struggle, but know that Pixel Game Squad's not gonna change. Uh, going through so many different forms on YouTube that we've been through, I've learned that I can at least hold Pixel Game Squad and retro gaming uh, and it, as a tight love because that's what it is for me. It's my play, my one place where I gotta express my, my true form of love, which is retro gaming, so. Yeah, that's it, and, and toys. I, gosh, I love toys as well, so. Thanks for watching. Uh, See, you, you, you just, you want to say all the typical, make sure to hit the, I don't care what you do. Subscribe if you want. I genuinely don't care. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You guys are always awesome. Have a good one.